Hi, it's Jordan Teen One, and I'm here today to show you the next animal in my animal magnet series. And today it's a horse, so I will show you what he looks like. I think he's so cute. Um, for this one, I use the caramel colored bands from Rainbow Loom for the main color of the body. They're like a brownish, orangish color. And then I used white and black as well. And then here's the back of him. You can see his mane. It was a little bit of a challenge to come up with how I did the tail, but you'll see how I do it when I get to that section. But I wound up linking two bands together, so where they tied together, I just placed a bow so you don't really notice it. So I think he turned out really cute, and I'm anxious to show you how to make it. So you can either do this on the full-size rainbow loom or the monster tail, and today I'll be showing it on the monster tail. And if you are going to do it on the full-size loom, I would recommend taking out the center row of pegs, and then the outer ones will be even with one another, and that way you'll have this open area to work with. And we'll just be working with six pins in the shape of a rectangle. And on the monster tail, the same thing. We're just going to be working with these six pins in the shape of a rectangle. And then here I have my magnets, and I will show you what the package looks like for those, in case you want to try and find them in your local area. They say Super Magnets, and they are made by the Magnet Source. And it does say on the package, Extremely Strong Magnets, not for children, because they don't want kids to get their fingers pinched in between the magnets. So I will leave that at your discretion. And then the size is 0.375 inches for the outer diameter, and you can see how big they are next to a dime. These are ring magnets, so they have the hole in the middle. But as I said, if you don't have magnets, that's okay. You can still make this, and it turns out just as cute. It just won't stick to your refrigerator. And then I have a twisty tie that I cut the plastic edges off of. It still has a little bit of plastic on it. Um, if you want, you can peel the plastic off altogether, and then it's just got the metal. We're just going to use this to thread the bands through the magnets. And then for today, I'm using brown for the main color of the body, and then I'm going to do black for the hooves, and then also for the mane and the tail. I have just a couple white bands that I'm going to use for the tip of the nose, and then I have the red bands for the bow on the tail. So as far as the number of bands I have today, I have 163 brown, I have 37 black, there are 6 white and 3 red. So hopefully I counted okay and it comes out, but in general you need right around that number, about 200 altogether. The first thing that I'm going to do is get one of the magnets. So I'm just going to slide them apart. They are pretty strong. And now I want to take the twisty tie and put it through the hole in the middle. Push that through. And now I'm going to take four black rubber bands. I'm just going to slide them on the end. You want them to stay in front of the magnet. And then I'm just going to close this. And then I want to slide it through here, through the hole, and I can then pull these bands right through that magnet. I can release this. And now what I need to do is to get both sides of the same band to get together. So it can be a little bit tricky to do, but what I like to do is just take one side and then gently pull to see which one moves on the other side, and I can see it's this one on the top. So I'm just going to get my hook to go through both of those bands, try and make them even. And then I'm going to put it on the top right pin here. Let me just move that camera a little bit closer. And now I'm just going to grab another band and I will gently pull on it to see which one moves. I can see which one it is here, so I'm going to pick up both of those ends. And then I'm going to move that one diagonally down and to the left. Grab another one here. 
and get the other side. That's going to go on the bottom right. And now there's just one left. So I'm going to grab it from underneath. Whoops, I pulled it a little too hard. It almost wants to come all the way through. Try not to let that happen there. I got both sides and I'm going to put it on this top left pin. So sometimes the bands get hung up in the middle with one another. You want to try and keep them as separated as you can, but if they are a little bit tangled, it's really not a big deal. So at this point now you have two rubber bands on each of the pins. And let me just quick show you what you would do if you're not using a magnet. So I'll show this on the bigger loom here. You would just take one rubber band and you would place it on the left hand side and it would go diagonally up and to the right and twist. And now you're going to take another band and you're just going to cross it to make an X. So it's going to go from that pin above on the left to the pin below on the right. And again you want to twist just this bottom layer. And then you want to put on a second layer. You always want to repeat that same pattern. Always start at the bottom left. And then cross it, making that X. And then from that point on, you'll be doing the same thing. So there's two rubber bands on each pin, the same as this one. So then the rest of the tutorial will be the exact same. So now this next layer is always going to be in the shape of that X, the same as I just showed you on the big loom. So for this one as well, you're going to start at the bottom left and go diagonally up and to the right. And you don't have to twist at all. And I am using brown for the rest of the leg. And now I just want to cross it. I'm going to do eight layers in total of brown. So this will be my first layer. And once you have three bands on, you want to remove that bottom layer. So it's going to be the bottom black rubber band from all four of the pins. It's the same concept as the double cross fishtail if you have ever made that in a bracelet. So that was my first one and I'm going to do a second layer. Again it's always that same pattern. And now remove the bottom. So again, it's going to be black. And now I'll do a third layer. So this part's really not too hard at all. And this will be my fourth. So we're almost halfway done here. Now this is number five. I think sometimes it is easy to lose count, especially if you're doing this while watching TV or not devoting your whole attention to it. <laughs> so I'm going to do layer six. seven and then I have one more layer of course you can do uh, more or less depending on how long you want your legs to be so this was the last one here
And now what I'm going to do is take the bottom two bands on the right, get them on my hook, and I'm just going to move them to the pin above. And then I want the bottom two bands to come over the top. Repeat that for the opposite side here. Just make sure that they both are making it on there. And then the bottom two are coming off. So now you have two bands left on each side. So what I'm actually going to do is take a second hook to take these off and I'm going to use that as my holding hook for all four legs. So I would recommend if you have two hooks to use this second hook as a holding hook. So I'm taking two from the right and then the other two from the left and then it can come off. Now if you don't happen to have two hooks, what you can do is to just use a pen or a pencil and you can just slide these on there until you need them and that way you'll have your hook free. So I'll just set this one aside for now and I'm going to go ahead and make the other three legs and so you can pause the video here. I've now completed all four legs and I have them on my holding hook so I'm just going to set this aside for now and the next thing I'm going to start on is the ears so I want to take one brown band and quadruple this. So I'm just going to place it on my hook and then twist and put it back on, twist, put it back on, and then twist and put it back on one more time. So you'll see four rubber bands. And now I want to take two additional brown bands and I'm going to hook that on the end here. And I'm just going to slide these four loops onto that band or those two bands and then put it right in the middle. And now I want to stretch this across the loom. So I'll do two loops on one side. I'm just going in the center here. And then I'll do the other two loops on the other side. And now what I want to do is take the bottom two bands on the right and I'm going to just get them on my hook and I want to stretch them out so they go over the next pin below. Do the same thing on the other side, just taking the bottom two and stretching them down. So it's going to make like a sideways hourglass figure or a bow tie. And now what I'm going to do is take two more brown bands, taking them both at once, and they're going to go across the bottom. And then I'll take another two bands, and they're going to go straight across the top. And now I want to remove the bottom two bands. Just be careful that the ones you just put on don't come off the top here. And then the same thing for the other side here. The bottom two are coming off of those both pins and going into the middle. And now I want the two bands on the top right to come down. And then the same thing on the other side. The top ones will come down. And now I'm going to take two additional brown bands and they're going to go right on top. So at this point you're going to have six rubber bands on each of the pins and I want the bottom four to come off so I'll just do two at a time. And then I'm going to repeat that for the other side. and push down. So that's one ear. I'm going to have to do that all over again. So I'm going to quadruple a band. So you're wrapping it around until you have four loops on there. And then you're going to take two more brown bands at once and slide the loops on. I'm going to stretch this across the middle again. And now this time I'm going to take the top two and stretch them up. Push that down. And now I need two more brown to go across the center pins and then another two for the top
going to remove the bottom two. It's going to go into the middle. And now this time I want the center bands to move up because of course we want the ears to be on the ends. Same thing on this side. Whoops. Make sure they both get on there. And now finally I have two more brown that are gonna go right on top. And then again, I want the bottom four. So I'm just doing two at a time. You can do all four at once, but I find it's a little bit too full on the hook. So I prefer to do the two and push down. So now the ears are done, so we can start the top of the head. And for this, I'm taking two brown bands and I'm going to start at the bottom left and stretch all the way up to the top right. So I'm skipping this center row. And I do want to twist this, just twisting those bands into that figure eight. And now two more bands are going to do another long stretch the opposite way. So I'm making a stretched out X and I am twisting this as well. And then finally two more brown are going straight across the middle and I will twist those also. And now I'm going to take two more brown and this time I'm going to stretch them out over all six pins. So I'm actually just going to do it on the left here. I'll stretch them all the way up and then I'm going to use my hook to pull them the rest of the way around. And depending on which brand of rubber bands you're using, this can get very tight. So you're just making that rectangle. It's going all the way around with the two bands. And now I need to remove the bottom four rubber bands on the corners and then just two from the middle. So again, I'll do two at once. So I'm doing four on the end here. And then on the center, just two. Now, when you try to pull these over the top in the middle, it can be a little tricky. So I would recommend having this pushed down as far as possible, this upper band. So that way you won't have as much of a problem with it coming over the top when you're trying to pull that over. And now again here we have four. Same thing over here. You want the bottom four. And again, I'm going to push this down because the center one always is the hardest. You can see as I'm pulling it up, it wants to just come right up and over. And then four here at the bottom. And push down. So you can see the ears here. What I'm going to do is just try and straighten these out. I'm just going to pull on them a little bit. I want them to be pretty much straight up. And then for the next layer, I'm going to do single bands and I'm just going to outline this rectangle shape. So I'll start at the bottom right here. Again, it's just one band at a time and I'm just working my way around. And now across the bottom to back to the start. And I have two rubber bands to remove from the bottom. It's going to be two from each of the pins and they are going to be tight because it's this band that stretched across all the pins. So it definitely you'll feel that it's tighter to remove. Again, just make sure that your upper bands aren't sliding off as you're pulling these up. going to push that down. And now on this next layer I'm going to add the eyes. So for that I'm going to take a black band, one single band, and quadruple it. I'm just going to do that on my hook. 
And now I'll take one single brown and I'm just going to slide this on. And I'll do the other one while I'm at it here. So I'm going to quadruple and then just slide it on one single band. Get it in the center. And now I am just going to outline these pins again starting at the bottom right. And the right side here is going to be the front of my horse so that's where I want the eyes to be. So I'm putting one of the bands with the eyes on first. And I'll get the other one to go from the middle to the top. Of course, if you have uh, beads, you could use beads. And now I'm going to just continue around with brown. And then back to the start here. And then once again, I want the bottom two to come over the top. And push that down and now we're going to do a whole bunch of double bands that are going all the way around all six pins so I'm taking two at once and it's going to stretch across all six it's going to be my first layer it's going to stretch that out just find that's a little bit easier to do it that way and then remove the bottom two Again, these center ones are going to give you the hardest time. So that was the first layer. And I'm going to do that four more times, all with brown. It's going to be two bands at once that are going to stretch across all six pins. And of course, when you remove the bottom, they are going to be tight as well. So depending on what brand you're using, it can be a little bit more of a struggle. So that was the second layer like that. So I'm going to do another one. Oops, this wanted to come off here. So again, I would suggest pushing this down to the bottom of the pin to help prevent that from slipping off. So that was my third layer. And then this is my fourth. We're doing five brown layers in total. Again, I'm going to push this down. And now I have one more layer of brown. And now after this, I'm going to do um, a couple layers of white. So I am choosing to do white because I think 
the black band for the nose will show up better against the white than it will the brown. So now I'm going to do the white. And again, it's going to go along all six pins, and it's going to be two bands at once. And remove the bottom. And now what I'm going to do is put a black band on for the nose, for the nostrils, so I'm going to do it from the bottom. I'm going to skip the middle and go to the next one above. It's going to be on the right since this is the front of the face, and it's going along the left hand side or the inside part of that middle pin. And now I have the two white bands to stretch over all six pins. And now I want to remove the bottom two white bands. So I'll do that for all six pins. And push that down. And now I'm going to add another layer of white. It's going to be two bands that are stretched out over all six pins. And now this time for where the black bands are, I'm going to remove all three bands at once, so the two white and the one black, just grabbing them all and pulling them over. In the middle, it's just two. And then on the end here, it's all three. I'm going to push this down and then two from the other side from all of these. Push down. Now for this next layer, it's going to be brown and it's going to be two bands at once. It's going from the bottom left to the top right. So it's a long stretch and you don't have to twist at all. And then two more are going to cross from the top left to the bottom right. And then finally, two are going straight across the center. And then I'll remove the bottom white here. So this basically completes the head. And now these brown bands will start the neck. I'm going to do one more set in that same pattern. So again, it's going from the bottom on the left to the top right. This is two bands at once. Now crossing that, and then two in the middle. So the next step we're gonna do is add the legs. After I get this looped here, Push this down. So I'm going to get the legs that are on my holding hook. I'm just going to take the one from the end. I'm going to slide it through this open area at the top. Just put it down through. And now I have two bands, two loops that are going to go on the left. Just make sure they both get on there. And then the other two loops are going on the right. And I'll take my other leg, it's going to go down through this open area here at the bottom. And the same thing, two loops are going on the left, and two on the right. Push that down. And now I'm going to put one more layer on of brown, and it's going to outline the pins here, so they're just single bands. Just 
going all the way around here. So the pins are getting pretty full since we have the leg bands on. So now this time on all four corners you're going to have four bands to remove. So I'm just going to do that two at a time. In the middle here there's just two. And then four from the end. And the same thing on the other side here. Two for the center, and then four again. And now I'm going to repeat that pattern four more times. So I'm just outlining here. And I'm going to be sticking with all brown for this horse, but of course you can use as many different colors as you like. You can just experiment here and switch out the colors. And I'll remove the bottom here. So that was my first layer of four. Just keep doing this over again here. So this part we're doing now is going to be the main body section. And if you wanted to make your horse be a little bit shorter, you could skip a layer or two. Maybe if you're running low on bands. So that was the second one. And this will be the third. So it's not too difficult. And now one more time here. And now finally I'm going to remove the bottom. And then on this next part I'm going to show you how to do the tail. And then we'll add that. We're getting near the home stretch here. And now for the tail part, what I am going to do is take two black rubber bands and I'm just going to put one on top of the other. Let me move this out of the way so you can have a clear background. And now the one on the top, I'm going to take the inside and it's going to come down through the other one. And the one on the bottom, you're going to take the inside and it's going to come up through. So basically you're making a slip knot. I'm going to pull that fairly tightly and that's just going to be one strand of the tail. And I want to do this five more times. So the one goes on the top, and then the one that's on the top goes down through the other one, and the one that's on the bottom comes up through the other one. And you want to pull that fairly tightly. So I tried many different methods to come up with the tail, and I really wasn't pleased with a lot of them. Sometimes they were just, the bands were all over the place, it was just too wild, and I wanted it to be as straight as possible, but the problem is when you cut the bands, they just kind of go all over the place, they're pretty wiry, 
So this is what I settled on in the end, what I'm going to show you. So this is my fourth one. I'm going to do six in total. Trying to get them to be as straight as possible, but they do want to curl sometimes. So here's my last one. And now what I'm going to do is put them on the left side in the center. So I'm just going to take one of the loops and put it on. The other will just hang. I'm just going to do that for all six of these. Just put one right on top of the other. If they're angled a certain way, try to keep them the same. Like this one's sort of angled down, so I'm going to face it down. If I have other ones that are angled down, I'm just going to keep facing them down. It's going to get very full. So if you want, you can just use your thumb or your finger to hold these down on that pin as you're holding your loom. Now I'm just going to add my next layer. Again, it's going to follow around the six pins. It's just going to go right over top here of all these black bands. And now I'm going to take the bottom layer off. So on the right side, it'll be easy. We just have the bottom two. And then on the left side, it's just regular at the top and at the bottom here. I'll do those two first. Now in the middle here, what I'm going to do is reach down through all of these black bands. You should have a nice circle there that's loose that you can easily reach down through. I don't know if I can get a good camera angle. Grab these bottom two brown and pull them over the top. It's just going to link those in place there. And I'm, I'm just going to leave these black bands on this pin for now. And now I'm going to add the other legs. So I'm doing that same thing. I'm putting it down through at the top. And then two bands will go on the left pin and the other two bands on the right. Doing that same thing here at the bottom. It's getting a little bit harder to work with since the horse is sticking out the bottom. And now one more thing, I'm going to add two brown bands that are going to stretch across all six pins. And now I'm removing the bottom four from the corners. I have two in the middle. Same thing on the ends here, the four. And then over here, it's four. And then in the middle here, I want to go down in through these black bands again. So grabbing the brown from the center and pulling it over. And now four. So that is it for that part. All we need to do now is close this up and then we can take it off of the loom. So the bottom two on the right, this is definitely going to be tight because this is what stretched around all six pins. So just be careful not to lose it off your hook. The bottom two are going to move up. And then the top two are going to come down. I'm going to do that for the left side as well. 
I'm just you can see I'm just using my thumb to hold these black tail bands out of the way so the bottom two will come down it's definitely a tight stretch and the bottom two will come up and now what I want to do is remove the bottom four again I'm holding these black bands out of the way and I'll take two at a time and then the same thing for the other side here just be really careful that the top bands stay on and they don't slide off when you're pulling it over the top and I'm taking one final brown band and it's not doubled, it's just single, it's going straight across the middle and now the bottom two brown can come over Oops. same thing on the other side here and now one side moves over to the other so I'll move the right over to the left and the bottom comes over the top and I can take this off now I'm going to pull this nice and tight and make a slip knot that's what's holding it all together so you want to make sure it's not going to come apart and now you can see we have all these bands sticking out that are for the tail so what I'm going to do is take a black rubber band and I want to wrap it around as close to the body as I can and I want to wrap it as many times as I can it's just going to keep these things tight So that's going to keep them together there. And now you can see we have this spot where all of the knots are, where the slip knots are. And so in order to hide that and get these to go as straight as possible, that's why I have the red bands. So I'm just going to take a red band and again do that same thing just going to wrap it around as many times as I can to make it nice and tight sorry if it's jumping all over the place here and I'm going to slide this down so it covers up all of the slip knot part. That's what I want to hide. And now I'm going to make the bow. So for this part, what I'm going to do is just take the two red bands do that same thing I did with the black bands. One goes over top of the other and they slide into one another. And now I'm just going to wrap this around and just tie it. Take the two ends and tie them. Just like you were tying a shoelace at the start here. And again you need to get it to go where the other red bands are so you might have to slide it around a little bit and pull that nice and tight and then the two ends will look like a bow and you can play with this a little bit to try and get the bands as smooth as possible 
And then at the very end with the black, what you're going to do is take a pair of scissors and you just want to snip the very edges so it looks fringy. Make sure you're only doing the black ones. And then here you have his tail. Now there is a loop here at the bottom that you're going to have to hide. So in order to do that, all you're going to do is just take your hook and then go through some of the bands on the bottom here. Grab this loop and pull it through. And then just keep repeating that until it's hidden. Or you can also take your hook and try and push that loop up inside of the body so you don't see it anymore. So there's a couple different things you can do. And then here is your horse. So there's one last thing that we're going to do which is to add the mane. And so in order to do that all I'm going to do is take some black rubber bands And I'll start here at the top. I'm just going to take my hook and I'm going to go down through two of the bands here. I'll take a black rubber band and slide it through. Just try not to get hung up on any other bands. And then what I'm going to do is just tie this. So I'm just going to put one in through the other. Gonna pull that nice and tight. You don't want it to come apart. And then I'm just going to keep repeating that. I'll go down to the next section here, the one right below. Go underneath two more bands. Grab a black and pull it through. Whoops, too far through. And now I'm just taking either side here and I'm going to loop one through the other and tie as if you were tying your shoe. So I'm just going to do that as far down as I'd like the mane to be, all the way down the back here in the middle. So I'll just fast forward through this section. And so now what I'm going to do is take the scissors and I'm just going to snip these, all the loops here, just so it looks fringy. And you can add as few or as many as you like, just till you think it looks good here. And you can play around with the positioning there. So that's the mane there in the back. And he might need a little bit of adjusting. For example, I would recommend here at the neck to just carefully try and pull up on this to get it to look a little bit skinnier where his face meets the neck. And then you can adjust the legs if they need to. And then here is your horse. Let me just zoom out a little bit so you can see the whole body. And then here's the other one that I showed you at the beginning with the different colors here. So I think they both turn out really cute. And again, you can adjust the ears or do however you like. So I hope that everyone enjoyed making their horses and that they turned out really cute. You can always leave me comments on YouTube and Facebook, post pictures of your creations to my Facebook page, and please feel free to subscribe to my YouTube channel so you can stay up to date on my latest tutorials. 
You can also find me on Pinterest and Instagram, so please feel free to subscribe to those as well. Thanks for watching!